This video does not promote violence. It demonstrates the process of feeding a spider. If you are sensitive, please refrain from watching this video. Hello, a large aquarium won't suit us today. We'll need to downsize it by about 50 times. In this small aquarium, my hand only fits halfway. Why do we need such a small aquarium? You'll soon find out. Let me try to give you a hint. What do you see in front of you? A dandelion in a glass? But if you look closely, you'll also see one little creature. Finally, we have a very interesting character worth your attention. It's the jumping spider. Not long ago, while replacing soil in hanging flower pots, I noticed this little one. I felt sorry for it and decided to help it until new flowers grow. Most likely, it was in the soil itself, hiding from the cold, although they often inhabit flowers, which serve as their hunting ground. These little hunters are true geniuses. Just imagine, they don't need to search for prey. They know that prey will come to them for pollen or the sweet nectar of flowers. They were named jumping spiders for their ability to leap. They use this skill precisely for catching prey. The retina of these animals is arranged unusually, with four layers of light-sensitive cells, one of which is entirely made up of green color receptors. Green color can never be in focus, so spiders' images appear blurry. Some scientists believe that it is precisely because of this apparent disadvantage that animals can so accurately calculate the distance to their prey. Such an engineering solution in hunting has never been used before, so the patent can confidently be given to jumping spiders. Jumping spiders predominantly lead a diurnal lifestyle. The spider happily basks in the morning sun's rays and upon noticing a person in sight, does not flee. It cannot be called timid, like other spiders. Today, for our spider, I prepared a swarm of moths, which are slightly larger than it. But let's hope the spider copes with such prey. They exhibit their maximum activity during the day and go hunting at night. They hunt insects that are smaller or equal to their body size. The spider's salivary glands contain venom, which, when injected into the victim's body, has a neuroparalytic effect. For humans, such venom is not dangerous. Moreover, the spider does not perceive humans as a threat to its life. Jumping spiders rarely show aggression towards humans. In most cases, this spider-like creature is peaceful and friendly, making it ideal for domestication. The body length barely reaches two centimeters. Individuals have eight eyes arranged in rows. The front and rear eyes help to determine the color and shape of objects, while the lateral ones are responsible for controlling movement. Such eye placement provides a 360-degree view, which is extremely important for spiders in the wild. In front, spiders have chelicerae, a paired organ directed towards each other. Its task is to capture food and deliver it to the oral cavity. The body is covered with soft and quite long bristles. They have a pattern in the form of stripes, which helps the spider camouflage in nature. Also, like praying mantises, the female eats the male after mating, which is habitual. Males do not resist, although they can resist. As for our spider's hunting, it caught the moth not on the first attempt, but it was very interesting to watch its jumps for prey. On the second attempt, the spider managed to catch the moth, which was twice its size. Moreover, this moth activated a protective mechanism for prolonging its offspring, and it immediately began to lay eggs. Just imagine how many moths could have been born if not for this little jumping spider. I hope you found it interesting, and I deserve your like for my efforts. And if you want to see this spider in new episodes, write the word want in the comments. Well, that's all for now. Goodbye, everyone.